Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today. It's Thursday. I'm having a great day. It's snowing outside. Well, I could do without the snow and the cold, but it's a beautiful day. I hope you are enjoying your walk with the Lord today. My Bible right now is sitting open to a very familiar passage, probably to many people. It's First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I chuckled because years ago, one of my staff young men had... Uh, come and graduated from Bible college, and he had a wee bit of a speech impediment, and he just couldn't say the word First Thessalonians. That word Thessalonians made him struggle. The whole church loved him, and we helped him, and he is right now pastoring a good, good church. Well, to get your Bible and join me there, get something, we'll let you take some notes. We were going to be studying in prophecy today. I've got a gospel tract here I want to talk to you about. I'll say more about that here in just a moment. But this is is day three in a series I'm doing on prophecy, and my title for the series is Making Prophecy Plain. I've borrowed the phrase, really, from the book of Habakkuk in chapter two, where God told the prophet Habakkuk to write the vision that God had given to him, and God said, make it plain, man, make it clear. What I'm doing in these broadcast series is taking the clear passages concerning future events, then I'm identifying what is openly said there, and then lastly, therefore, saying that, therefore, these are things that, since they're clearly taught and laid out in Scripture, we ought to believe them. Today, I'm talking about the rapture. Now, that word will either bring great smiles or great frowns from a lot of God's people. The word rapture comes from a Latin root that simply means caught away or taken away. Using it in a romantic sense, when I met my wife and we started dating, I was enraptured by her. She took my heart away romantically. Well, today I'm talking about a future event when believers are taken away physically from the earth. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to use clear and plain Bible passages, so get your Bible and join me there in 1 Thessalonians and chapter 4. Bible Track Echoes is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracks Incorporated. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. I'm referring to a short written presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ it's in a format to be used as an evangelism tool. One of the tracks, and we, pr- we published many of them, one of them is in my hand right now. It's probably my favorite one of all. I use it all the time personally. This one's entitled, How Can a Person Be Away? How Can a Person Be Away? And the gem of this track is this. It just clearly lays out that it takes a person to save us. Not a church, not a ceremony, not good works, uh, not taking communion, not helping the poor. You need a person to save you from your sin, a person to save you from hell. And that person is Jesus Christ. This is an effective track. It's effective in English. It's effective in Spanish. It's effective in the Muslim world. It's effective in the uh, Hindu world. This, This track just works. Please let me send it to you. It's part of a sample packet. If you'll hang on, have pen and paper ready, at the end of this broadcast, my announcer will make known three different ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Do that, and we will give you the free sample packet. We try to get out that out as quickly as we can. It will include this one, How Can a Person Be Away, along with about 40 others that are there. You're going to find some tools that you're going to say, Man, I wish I had this before. I know people I can give this track to. Please get the track from us. Be ready 
today. You can, by the way, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. I spelled the word tracks a moment ago. The word Inc. is short for incorporated. BibleTracksInc.org. Okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning at verse 13, the Bible says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others that have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Here's prophecy giving comfort. I love that. Now, this is the classic passage on the rapture of church-age saints. And again, that word in its most basic meaning is to be caught up, to be taken away. But let me tell you why these verses are even here in the book of 1 Thessalonians. If you're a note taker, jot down about six facts real quickly. Number one is this. 1 Thessalonians was Paul's earliest book that he ever wrote, okay? That's number one. Fact number two. This book was written to answer some really tough questions. Why? Well, that brings me to fact number three. The Apostle Paul started the church there in Thessalonica. We find that record beginning at verse 1 in Acts chapter 17. But Paul was only there for two to three weeks. He was forced out due to persecution. Then, fact number four, because he was only there for two or three weeks, Paul did not have the time to teach all of the doctrinal lessons he wanted to, so the believers had some real problems and issues that they needed truth to help them solve. Fact number five, Paul had obviously taught them about the Lord's coming. We see that in chapter one, verses nine and 10. But then, fact number six, Paul had not had the time, evidently, to teach about the rapture, and so there is a lot of issues about believers when they die. He had not had time to teach what happens to believers when they die, so between his being there and the time he'd been gone, some of the believers in the church had died, and the rest were wondering about these dead saints. Were they going to miss out on the coming of Christ? Now, that's the basic background to why Paul is writing these verses. Now, remember, my premise in this study on prophecy is this. I want to make the plain statements of Scripture, bring them out in their clarity, in their plainness, and let us look at them. We are letting the clear statements of Scripture be what you and I hold on to and we believe in. They become our foundational rock. Now, yesterday on the broadcast, I talked about the second coming of Jesus. That's when he comes to earth to set up his kingdom. But these verses in 1 Thessalonians 4 speak about believers going up into the air to meet Jesus. Now, obviously, we got two different things going on here. One, Jesus comes down to earth. The other, believers go up to him. Again, letting the obvious statements in the passage be our teacher, here's what we know. I gave you a set of six facts before. Let me give you five facts that come out from this verse, this set of verses here in chapter four. Fact number one, this event is different from Jesus' second coming. Now, some Bible lovers, and I mean that wholeheartedly, people that love Christ as Savior, they love the Word of God, they link this event here with Jesus' second coming. Now, that issue is not going to be addressed here today, but a unique and different thing is happening here. Here, believers are going up into the air, not Jesus coming down to the earth to judge sinners. That's fact number one. From this fat passage here, fact number two is this. This event is connected with a resurrection. 
Verse 14 says God will bring those deceased believers with him when he come. And then fact number three, at this catching away event, the bodies of the dead saints that are in the grave, those bodies are going to be raised. And verse 16 says the dead in Christ will rise first. There's an order of how people are taken up into the air. Fact number four. We see in verse 17 that living believers will also, it seems to be in quick succession here, the living believers are going to also join the resurrected believers in the air. So you got Christ returning in the air with the souls of those who believers that have died and gone to heaven already. They come with Jesus. We're told here there's a trump and so on and and a shout. I'm not even going to deal with those things here at all today. But at that time, the bodies of these dead saints that Christ brings with him, the bodies will be raised and their physical body, now changed, will be connected and brought back together with their soul and spirit. But then in quick succession, those that are alive at that moment, they're going to be caught up in the air. And then fact number five, verse 17 adds these words, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, this verse does not say where we're going to be. It only says who we will be with. Now, you may have some other things that you see here in 1 Thessalonians 4, but let me tie in another very familiar section of Scripture found in the Gospel of John. You know John chapter 14, 1 to 3, I'm sure. That's the place where Jesus said he's going to go to prepare a place for believers. He calls that place his Father's house. Now, That means it's going to be in heaven. Then Jesus says that he will come again and receive believers unto himself. Notice the saints go to him. He comes to them and they go to him. No mention here is made about Jesus coming to rule and reign for that thousand years. He's only coming to get believers. 1 Thessalonians 4 does not mention Jesus ruling and reigning either, only getting believers. Then John 14 verses 3 and 4 say that Jesus will, I'm quoting now, receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also. And whither I go you know and the way you know. Now, what is my point here? My point is this. First Thessalonians 4 and John 14 talk about Jesus coming for, notice F-O-R, for his saints. He comes for them so they can be with him. Those already deceased believers come with Jesus and get their resurrected bodies. Those believers alive at that time join Jesus in the air also. Now, why? Why go to be with Jesus? That's that Jesus comes, and the why reason is that believers, church age saints, can go to be with him. No mention again is made here of ruling and reigning with Jesus yet. Now, these two portions of Scripture talk about a catching away, not a second coming. We call this event the rapture of the church. Now, friend, if that rapture were to happen today, would you go to be with Jesus because you're saved, or would you be left out of this event? If you're left out, the only thing you have awaiting you is the great tribulation period. And brother, sister, you don't want to go there. If you have missed Christ before this rapture and you've heard the gospel, you know you're a sinner and need to be saved from your sin and don't get saved, I think the scripture teaches that you won't have a chance afterward. Now, friend, you need to receive Christ today because Jesus could come at any moment. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. 
May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.